So Spot It was the sleeper hit of PAX. Like we were uh, PAX East last year. We were jumping yeah, all over been, this game. It's been, we can call this past year the year of Spot It. I own like three. Well, I have. In fact, owned, I think Spot It's probably the tabletop game of the year. Too. I have owned like five Spot It sets because I keep buying it and giving it to people as gifts. I, in fact, I gave the first Spot It set I bought that unfortunately has a for rectal use only sticker on it to Robert Koo. Oh, you mean fortunately. <laughs> I'm curious to see if he has played that spotted or if he has, in fact, not opened it for well, fear. If, if he has the Q&A, you can go and ask him. I will. It's at midnight on Friday. I know. So, uh, Blue Orange Games made Spotted, and uh, they made another game. They have a lot of games that they've made. I think they have an excess uh, in their warehouse of circular cards and metal tins. So, so Trigger <laughs> is a newer game they made that looks a lot like Spotted. Little tin, circular cards, uh, all that stuff. And the way Trigger works, I'm going to spoil the review right now. It's a great concept, and it was fun to play once. Kind of. Half fun. It would No, I, I would argue we had fun because of all the arguing and problems. Some of the times had. it was fun. Some part of, but it's like part of the time we were playing was fun, and part of the time we were playing was not fun. You got to admit, when, when uh, my question to all of you was, the state we are in ends in A... Constant. That was the fun part. <laughs> <laughs> so the way the game works is you have a card with a question on it or a statement like your first name has an even number of letters or I have children or the answer is false to you know something like that. You can whistle your own national anthem. Everyone slams down either the right hand or the left hand on the trigger, which is the little foam pad. The right hand you slam down if the statement is true. Now, if the statement says you, then it means you personally. So if it's like, you are wearing pink shoes, then if you are wearing pink shoes, you say true. But if the person says, I am wearing pink shoes, it's if the person who said the thing on the card right, is so wearing some, pink so shoes. So if it's a you question, then people might have to give different answers. Like, what you know, let's say I'm wearing shoes and the guy next to me isn't, and it, the, it says you are wearing shoes. Well, I'm going to put down the true hand, and he's going to put down the false hand, right? C but if it's a question where it's a my question, then it's a question about the question asker, in which case everyone, the, you know, has the same answer as is the correct answer. Now, yeah, and you put your left hand down for false. Yep. Then we, we sort it out. Whoever put the correct answer down first gets to keep the card, and they're the reader next. Whoever put the first wrong answer down, if there is a wrong answer, gives up a card. Mm. And then, based on the color of the back of the card, the person who won the point is now the new reader. And you go through until someone runs out of cards. Right, so basically winning doesn't actually get you anything, because right? Because you then have to read a new card, but it... You know, it helps you because when you're reading a card, there's no chance you can lose one in that round. So if you win every round, there's basically no chance of you ever losing a card because you're reading questions the whole time. But, uh, so what the game comes down to is, you know, who can hold out the longest without losing all their cards, right? So it's, the game could go on forever if everyone plays perfectly. Unlike Spot It, which is sort of like, it's going to end. Now, the concept is great. And we know it is because when we played, some of the questions, like everyone would be like, like your brain, just like Spot It, your brain would freeze. Your adult brain would say, wait a minute, I'm good actually a baby. Yep. And that part is really fun. Like you get questions like, what's a really good one? Because some of the questions are kind of dumb. The some ones that are, have a lot of double negatives. Yep. Stuff like that. The opposite of false is true. At least two players are wearing shoes with no laces. I'm reading the card in English. The table we are playing on is round. Uh, now, that's where the problems begin. Right. A lot of these questions have assumptions built into them. We weren't playing on a table. We were playing on the floor. So what is that question? Even, you know, should it be, you know, it obviously it's not true because we're not playing on a table. It should but be, it's now, not false either. Well, it is because logically the statement is false because one portion of it is false. Yeah, it's, it's However, tough though. However, that's fine because that we could argue. But some of the questions have a problem that they will specify what the actual answer is. They'll put a little T or a little uh, F next to it. Because they think, the people who made this game, that no matter what, that question will always be true or always be false. Sometimes this is the case. Sometimes it is actually not. For example, 
Green is made by mixing blue and yellow. They say this is always true, but wait a minute. Not are if we it's talking light. about pigments or are we talking about light? Exactly. We're too smart so that we know better than, you know, that you can make a really good argument. And basically, it's a bullshit question. Or at this table, all right, we already don't have a table. Yep. There are as many mouths as there are noses. What if someone lost their nose in Nam? Now what game? <laughs> exactly. What if someone has two noses? What if there's like, you know, some, like a, 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 one of those, you know, uh, funny glasses with the nose built onto it sit, sitting on the table that's an extra nose oh there's a good one though this is not the first half of the year and the first letter of the state we are in is in the first 10 letters of the alphabet <laughs> <laughs> see those are good ones right ones that where there's no ambiguity there's no argument to be made it's true or false some of these right there was one that wasn't even true or false it was like a command. Yeah, it was like slam both your hands down at the same time. Well, it's like, well, wait a minute. That's not a true or false statement. That's bullshit. Also, some of them are predicated upon the future. So I realized that I could retroactively change the result of the game. One of them was, you are sleeping here tonight. Yep. So we had some friends who were actually sleeping over, but Scott wasn't sleeping over. But he could have said true and then said, all right, yeah, I am going to stay the night. Yeah. Or what if I didn't let him stay the night? Or what if something happened later and they weren't a people weren't able to sleep there? You know, you never know what's gonna happen. So you can't you can't make true or false statements about the future unless, you know, psychic powers are real. Now the other trouble is that the way the game is written, it doesn't have all the game modes like Spot It did. So the game kind of peters out, and then you're going to rapidly have the same questions over and over again as the game goes well, toward its conclusion. Well, that's another flaw in the game, right? Everyone's dealt these cards at the beginning of the game, and you, you, you cycle through those cards, and each card does have five questions, but you don't choose which question to ask. It's determined by the color of the previous card. So as you keep, if you keep playing and you don't suck, right, then what happens is you keep asking the same questions over and over again, and you don't draw any new cards. To get new questions, you'd have to play again a new game with new cards or bring in some sort of house rule where you can throw away cards you have already and draw new ones and stuff like that. Um, but it's not in the official rules. So, yeah, the rules are flawed in that you don't get fresh questions and eventually you're doing the same things over and over again. It's Which is actually, you know... Uh Apples to Apples has a similar problem that everyone uses their good cards, and then if the game goes on too long, everyone has nothing but a bunch of shit proper nouns, and everyone's just bored and waiting for the game. That's to why end. you get to get so many expansions. But even if you get so many expansions, it's not like they're all good cards in there. You yep. still get a handful of crap cards. The real answer is you got to make your own apples to apples. Yeah. But uh, the other problem with the rules is that the way it works, you can't really get ahead. You can basically just hold out. I already, and, I already discussed yeah, that. Yeah. But. There's a way around that, and that maybe you just don't answer any questions. Then you can never fall behind. Well, I think, see, the way I interpret it is that you have to put a hand down, right? But so, it doesn't specify a time limit, so I can just wait till everyone's done, sit there, fully consider the question, and very slowly go, eh. Yeah, that's, I, I'm fine with that. But so, I, I, I feel guess, like you have to put a hand down because let's say everyone puts a correct hand down, no one's saying anything. You still have to think about it and decide if it's right hand or, or what to do. But the way the questions are, given. 30 seconds to think. You're guaranteed to not fuck it up. I know. So. Unless it's one of those stupid ambiguous questions. What this game is, if I had to encapsulate it in a word, is broken. lazy. I call it broken. Bro not broken. I'm going to say lazy. Because I'm going to say broken. The well, yeah, it is broken, but it's only broken due to laziness. The concept uh, right. is really solid, and it could have been great. They just didn't even like put half a fucking ass into the questions they put on it, and they didn't actually think about the mechanics. It's like they didn't actually playtest this game. I cannot imagine adults playing this game for more than two seconds without running into a question they can't answer from the rules. Yeah, you could take this exact same rule set, Add a rule for maybe switching cards out or drawing cards or something like that. Like when you win, you draw a card yep. or Uno. And then, um, you know, clarify the rule about, you know, uh, do you have to answer or not? Maybe do something and then like... get rid of any ambiguous question and only put in good... The good questions. Yep, like one way, maybe you make a rule like the last person to put their hand down gets some penalty to force people to move yeah, quickly. Yeah, something. The game could be fixed... Uh, with the significant effort, it could be an okay game. It wouldn't, still wouldn't be as good as Spot It though, even if it, all those problems are solved. I think it could be because mm. the few rounds where the question was good and there was no ambiguity had the exact same brain feel as Spot It. Yeah, but I think Spot It is just, uh, you, know, you, can't, you can't compete with Spot It. I, mean, uh, I think you could. Just, yeah. This game, like I said, this game is broken, but it's broken due to nothing more than laziness. This could have easily yeah. been a really fun game, but instead, as it is, 
I would not buy this game if I were you. No, we're not going to be having 10 copies given them away. I'm going to try to fix it. Like I'm other than You I had to make all new cards. No, I can't fix the questions, but I'm going to try to figure out a way to at least fix the mechanics. Because I think the concept is solid. Maybe, I don't know, i got to come up with it. Maybe I swap it instead of putting your hands down. There's a totem. I don't know. I'll come up with something. Yeah. I'll make like a trigger mod. Sure. 